The Great Barrier Reef is recognised all over the world for both its stunning beauty and its environmental diversity. That's why the International Maritime Organisation declared the Great Barrier Reef and Torres Strait particularly sensitive sea areas. This means extra care needs to be taken to safeguard the reef from the potential impacts of shipping. The Marine Park is a multi-use area supporting industries such as tourism, fishing and shipping. Most of these rely on a healthy reef ecosystem to be viable. Bulk exports and the import of fuel and manufacturing resources are crucial to Australia's economy. Eleven ports operate close to the Great Barrier Reef and account for $17 billion of Australia's annual export trade. And the shortest navigational route from these ports to Asia and the Pacific runs through the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, in addition to that, the Torres Strait is a, is a significant international passageway. Um, connecting the Arafura Sea through to the, the Pacific. Compared to Asian and European seaways, traffic is generally lighter in the reef VTS area. However, sections of the reef are complex to navigate. The region is remote and very demanding for mariners who can encounter confined waters, strong tidal streams and shallow reefs and shoals. There are also tropical monsoons and cyclones. The Reef Vessel Traffic Service, or Reef VTS, keeps in touch with all shipping in the Great Barrier Reef and Torres Strait to help mariners safely navigate through the Great Barrier Reef. It is the responsibility of shipmasters and pilots to keep regular contact with the Reef VTS Centre. Located in Townsville, Reef VTS is the coastal vessel traffic service for the Great Barrier Reef and Torres Strait. So the idea of Reef VTS is to ensure that we uh, have got a safe shipping industry there that doesn't impact on the world heritage values and the other industries, tourism and fishing, on which we all depend in, in the reef. It is one of the largest coastal vessel traffic services in the world, monitoring some 6,000 kilometres of coastline from Cape York to Sandy Cape. Reef VTS operations is uh, jointly managed between the Federal Authority AMSA and the State Authority Maritime Safety Queensland through a memorandum of understanding. All ships longer than 50 metres as well as many vessels such as oil and gas carriers of any length must report to Reef VTS. Through monitoring the area, Reef VTS improves navigational safety and reduces the risk of shipping incidents which results in a reduced risk of damage to the marine environment. Reef VTS can also assist with responses to any safety or pollution incidents. The centre is staffed around the clock by VTS operators who monitor and communicate with vessels using land-based and satellite systems. My role here at Reef VTS is to provide real-time ship traffic information to mariners uh, to monitor and track these vessels uh, through the reef. Initial training for VTSOs is uh, for on-the-job training here at the centre. Uh, after a continuous time of uh, service they'll be offered a Certificate 3 in VTS operations, a formal um, internationally recognised qualification. The Reef VTS system, uh, the, the forerunner of it was called Reef Rep, which was a compulsory reporting system. When it came into force on the 1st of January 1997, it was one of the world's first ship reporting systems. Since then, Australia has continued to improve protection of the region through measures such as automated position reporting via Inmars at Sea and monitoring software with decision support tools. The Reef VTS was fully introduced in 2004 which has all the benefits of providing a lot more assistance and monitoring the vessels in addition to uh, uh, the more reporting. Then, in April 2010, the bulk carrier Shang Nang One ran aground on Douglas Shoal in the southern part of the Great Barrier Reef. The location of this incident was out of the Reef VTS reporting area at the time of the grounding. As a result of this incident, the Australian Maritime Safety Authority reviewed existing measures and found Reef VTS to be highly successful in preventing incidents. The Reef VTS has been extremely successful. Since its introduction in 2004, there's only been one grounding in the past seven years. It represents a 90% reduction in the rate of groundings from what we saw in the past before Reef VTS was introduced. Based on these impressive results, it was decided Reef VTS should be extended to include the southern boundary of the Great Barrier Reef. This came into effect on the 1st of July 2011. Great Romeo, sir, thank you for your position report. We'll update traffic shortly.
Reef VTS provides essential and timely information to ships to assist in their onboard decision making. A single surface picture of ships going through the area is built up using a number of different sensors such as AIS or Automatic Identification System, radar and automated position reporting via Inmarsat C. Some 5 million position reports are processed each day. This information is constantly displayed to VTS operators. Shipmasters are required to send a series of mandatory reports to Reef VTS in regards to transiting the area. These reports provide Reef VTS with vital information to identify the ship and their intended passage. And draft of 8.98. Over. Romeo, sir, thank you for the report. All received. Over. Any changes to their voyage or issues with the vessel must also be reported. The ship and reef VTS communicate through a coastal VHF radio network and email through Inmarsat C systems. The vastness of the reef VTS area means that VHF is limited in some remote areas, in which case vessels can communicate through Inmarsat C. Reef VTS predicts ship encounters and tells ships when they will pass other ships. Additional maritime safety information may also be provided. To assist an operator in their role, Reef VTS uses automated decision support tools to monitor the transit of individual ships. The system alerts the operator when a ship enters shallow water, strays from a planned route, or when a vessel is about to make a critical turn. Trinity Bay, this is Reef VTS. Morning, sir. Equipment indicate that you are standing into shallow water. I can confirm I'm aware I'm in shallow waters. We are exiting our anchorage in Lloyd's Bay. My deepest draft is four metres. Trinity Bay, this is Reef ETS. Romeo, sir, that is all received and understood and acknowledged. And you have the RPM weeper there on your port side. No other traffic to affect you at this time. Thank you, sir. Similar to like if a ship goes into a shallow area, we've got critical turns, we've got three critical turns in our system. An audible alarm will activate. After looking at the situation, the operator may decide to intervene with the ship to confirm their intentions or in a situation where the ship is approaching danger, they can provide navigational assistance to avert a grounding. Reef VTS plays an important role in incident response. They alert and provide relevant information to the emergency response teams by monitoring the situation and communicating with the ships involved. The operator may alert other vessels in the area and provide further information if they believe a danger exists to them during their transit. Shipmasters are expected to make the best use of the information Reef VTS provides. However, by law, the shipmaster remains responsible for the safe navigation of their vessel. My role, I have a command of all of this vessel, but I'm not so familiar in this area, so we have to cooperate with the pilot. Pilot is very familiar with, with this area. Australia's coastal pilotage system for the Torres Strait and sections of the Great Barrier Reef requires all ships greater than 70 metres in length to carry a coastal pilot. These pilots provide local knowledge to assist ships with navigating through some of the narrow and complex shipping routes. We have to cooperate to protect our ship's property and environmental protection in this Great Barrier Reef. Once a pilot boards a vessel, they notify Reef VTS and provide any additional information about the vessel's transit, such as the route they intend to take. Reef VTS is uh, giving all the information about traffic uh, mainly and uh, uh, that's uh, very important to us, uh, especially in bad weather and uh, especially in high, high traffic. As an additional measure to protect the environment, AMSA has introduced an underkeel clearance management system into the Torres Strait. Underkeel clearance is the acceptable distance between the bottom of the ship's hull and the seabed. The system assists the pilot in keeping the ship's keel clear of the seabed and minimises the risk of running aground. It operates um, by using environmental sensors throughout the Torres Strait to predict a vessel's underkeel clearance margin. Reef VTS assists the pilot by monitoring and providing underkeel clearance information when requested or if alerted by an escalating situation. AMSA and MSQ are working with mariners to make shipping in the Great Barrier Reef and Torres Strait area safer and more efficient.
we've been entrusted with guardianship of one of the world's great natural treasures. The key to protecting the reef is cooperation and communication. Through Reef VTS and other protection measures, the Australian and Queensland governments are working with the shipping industry to safeguard the reef for the future.